Today we're touring my bedroom, AKA my fish room. You wanna know why? Cause I have hundreds of fish, nine aquariums, and it's insane. I work, game, sleep, I do everything, and keep fish all in my bedroom, and now it's becoming a huge fish room, and people often call it an aquarium. It all started with one 2.5 gallon tank many, many years ago, and now here we are with a pond and many, many aquariums. So let's check it out. So as we come into the fish room, you guys can see how all the tanks are behind me, and then on this side of the room is my bed and computer, but on this side is just a fish party that I have tons of tanks and tons of fish in. I'm gonna walk you guys through each tank so you know what fish I keep, how I keep them, and overall what I'm doing with all these tanks and how I manage them in this room. We got a discus tank here, we got an angelfish and barb tank here, also a mini predator tank as I call it with this African leaf fish. We have African cichlids in this tank, we have plecos and guppies in this tank, we have more angelfish, we also have Synodonus catfish, plecos in here. We also have quarantine tanks with four discus in it. We have a breeder guppy colony and we have platies in this tank. So let's start going through all the tanks so I can show you what I have in each of them specifically and what you might like in the scaping I've done for a lot of them. I also have a new pond outside my window where I recently added all these plants, rocks, and made it look really, really nice. I posted a video about this that you guys can watch as well. Because each tank is doing a different thing. I keep some tanks for breeding, some tanks for looks, and some tanks just for your fun and having a great time with the fish that I've always wanted to keep. I'm gonna show you my favorite tank at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Let's get started with the African Cichlid tank. This is a 125 gallon African Cichlid tank. These are yellow lab cichlids or a type of Imbuna. And then these are Madoka white lip paps that are also from the same lake as the yellow labs. I also have tons of catfish in here. You can also see the Burchardi. These guys are from Lake Tanganyika, and I'm hoping this is a pair and we'll start getting babies soon. One of my favorite parts about this tank is the catfish. I have probably like 12 or 13 of the Synodonus multipunctatus and Petricola in here. So this tank is definitely one of my favorite. I had many different fish in here over the time. I like changing the rocks. I'm going for like a coastal seascape with the plants and everything and all the seashells, which just look really, really cool and add buffer to the water for the cichlids. Now, I have a dominant male in here and a lot of these yellow labs I often sell off. The fish that I really enjoy keeping and waited a long time was these Madoka white lips. Madoka white lips get quite large. They have this beautiful white lip and then they get quite iridescent when they get older. And the males and females look very similar which is why I fell in love with them. Most haps the females don't look that great but these guys, all of them start to look great and they get quite large at like eight or nine inches, maybe even bigger. This is one of the dominant males. He's just stunning, shining blue, and that's only gonna get better as he gets older. And then they contrast well with the yellow labs in here. And you can see how many yellow labs there are compared to the blue ones. So I tend to breed these as, you know, whatever babies survive, I'll sell them off and get credit at the fish store. Who knows, I might also change the stocking. I just love African cichlids and I've kept many, many cichlids over the years, but I also really wanna grow out these Madoka white lips. And we have another one of my favorite tanks, which I recently just scaped in also in another video, which is the 40 gallon breeder tank, which literally is meant for breeding t fish. I have super red, orange, bristlenose plecos in here, breeding, I have guppies, endlers, these Japan double blue gold endler guppies. I move them into this tank. All the plants in here are called cryptocorns or a variety of cryptocorn for the most part. And they just look really nice and hopefully they're gonna fill in. I also have orange shrimp in here. As you guys can see right there, there's like an orange shrimp on the leaf, a bunch of baby fish as well. Look, there's a baby pleco there, orange shrimp right there. And they get along pretty well. I have a suspicion that these white cloud minnows are eating some of the babies. So in a future video, we'll be adding them to the pond. Look at this baby right here, just climbing on the glass. The plecos tend to spawn in these caves right here and they just protect the babies and the males do that as well. I also created this nice little area where all the fish feed and just looks stunning. There's also some green laser quarries in here, but I never see them and they hide most of the time. They come when I'm not in the room. Then in this tank, we have the mini predator tank also a really fun tank. This tank definitely is gonna see some big changes coming soon in terms of stocking. I just am not enjoying the rosy barbs and tiger barbs as much. The tiger barbs are really aggressive towards each other. And as you can see, like one's just bullied in the corner. And I'm used to that with African cichlids, but these guys, their colors don't look great all the time. And they're actually rare platinum tiger barbs, platinum green tiger barbs. 
and I was hoping that they would color up really nicely. We'll see what I decide on the green platinum tiger barbs. One moment, they're really, really awesome, doing well, and the next, just not my favorite fish, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, someone else can enjoy them and maybe they'll go into a much bigger tank. You have the blue zebra angels. This is a proven pair. They've spawned a couple times, but of course there's too many fish in here for them to raise the babies. And one of my favorite fish, which is the African leaf fish. I grew this fish up since it was like half an inch to an inch in size, and it's just been going crazy. And this is what makes me want to have a mini predator tank where I can watch the fish eat some live shrimp and things. Also just see how big they get, you know, and I've never really kept a predator tank, so this would be something that really interests me, and maybe you get some cool big catfish as well. And of course, if the fish get too big, we'll get a bigger tank, or you know, move them on to somebody else that has a bigger tank. Also have one lone neon rainbow. Unfortunately, the ones I had with him didn't make it over the past few months, and some disease broke out in the tanks. For him, he's doing pretty well on his own. This tank has plenty of plants in it, I, the plants, I definitely want more stem plants to fill in this side over here because it's looking a little bare. The lighting on this tank, I was messing with it so much trying to get it to work and not grow too much algae. Also, this is a 65 gallon tank. If you have any questions about any of the tanks I have or any of the things I keep in the tanks, make sure to comment it down below. I'd love to answer them. Didn't want to go too in depth because there's a lot in these tanks and a lot of things that would just really be boring. So comment down below if you have a specific question. Also, let me know what fish you guys keep. Then down here, we have the super orange veil fin angel fish. These guys, I'm supposed to be breeding. That's why I got them. They do spawn, but I need to get them into a different tank. And I'm making a lot of progress towards being able to get them in a tanks by themselves or little sections so they can breed similar to this. We also have some Cynodonus lucipinus in here. You can see that catfish is poking out. Also want to breed those, but those take a couple years to get to breeding age. But they also look stunning, and I thought about moving them into this tank with the mini predators so we can see them more and enjoy them a lot more. Because in here, they just hide most of the time. We also have some baby plecos. You know how I have the super red long fin bristle nose? Well, these are the lemon, blue eye lemon plecos, and I'm breeding these as well. You can see a baby right there and a lot of them are in the back. I wanna give them more room, so this tank is changing soon, so I can have more babies. And I'm gonna create, similar to this tank over here with guppies and plecos, gonna do it with this tank. Then, in these tanks down here are my two quarantine tanks at the moment. I have some discus that I was saving from a fish store in another video if you wanna check that out. And this, they're looking much, much better now. This guy's still looking very skinny, so I'm definitely treating for more internal parasites just in case. This one is looking much healthier and getting and putting on some weight. These guys are my yellow discus that I've had for a while. One of them has not eaten for months and is driving me insane. I'm trying a lot of different things. I'm thinking I have to do more medicine to make sure that he is eating and doesn't have any internal parasites. This little yellow guy is not eating, but his brother, or one that I got him with, is eating now. Discus can be very, very moody, making it very, very difficult to know if it's an internal issue or if they're just not eating because they're not happy with the water quality, they don't like the food, whatever it may be. Like, we'll be super, super picky. Like, the yellow guy in here will only eat bloodworms, and that's not a good diet for him, so we have to switch him to something else. But once these guys are ready to go into the display tank, they will, and then these tanks will be all moved out. Here's the panda guppy colony. These guys are doing quite well. They breed a lot. You can see the males right there. These guys are the ones I wanna put into the 40 gallon with the yellow plecos because I think they'll just look great together and give them more, much more room. These 10 gallon tanks make it very hard to control water quality. And then these are my platies. They have not been doing well, but right now they're looking pretty good. I'm definitely doing more and more water changes, trying to treat them. They just had some bacteria that's just not let, like, let them thrive. But long term with these platies, I'm putting them into the pond because they are gonna look stunning in the pond and get them out of these 10 gallon tanks. 10 gallon tanks are great, but they're really hard to control how good the water's doing and measure it and keep it stable for the fish. Also not a lot of room. Plan is with down here to remove three of these tanks, put a 40 gallon there like these two and move another one of these tens to this side maybe and then use that 40 gallon for the angelfish, put the guppies in this tank and put the angelfish over here. And then only having a 10 gallon here for a quarantine. And that's all it should be, 10 gallons. Just really tough to keep sure, make sure the water's doing well, even if you have an automatic water change system. Before I show you guys my favorite tank, I wanna show you the pond and how I change the water on all these tanks. So the pond is out here. I have goldfish, guppies, and some danios in this pond, the duckweed. 
will eventually be eaten by the goldfish, so it's not to worry, and sometimes it looks quite nice. We have a lot of plants on the side up here, have rocks all around it, and all these plants over here are gonna fill in. This pond is about 125 gallons, and hopefully we'll be able to add some more fish into it, like the minnows and, and platys. Definitely have more plants for this pond, maybe some more goldfish as well. Right here is my auto water change system, so water comes from outside, goes into here, has a schedule, and the water gets distributed to all the tanks, and then all the water drains out through there into the garden over here. The water goes through a carbon block filter and sediment filter to dechlorinate it, so it's all good for the fish. Also over here, on this side of my room, behind my door, is where I keep all my fish food for the most part, some supplies, medications, fertilizers, things I just generally use on a daily basis when working with all the tanks. And from this view, you guys can really, really see how my room's set up with my bed, my desk, and then all the tanks on this side. So you're instantly greeted with the side of the discus tank, which is amazing. Now for my favorite tank and most expensive, I believe. I've put a lot of money into this tank, into the fish especially. So here is my 90 gallon discus tank. I have quite a few discus in here and eventually they might get too big, but for right now, as we're growing them up, perfect size, doing well. We have some discus that I've had for a while, like this guy I've had for quite a bit. He's the dominant discus in the tank. I have some plants growing pretty well. Honestly, I've not had any issues with any of the plants at higher temps, keep the tank at about 85 for them. I've gone higher, I've gone lower with the discus depending on the size. This is the brother or fish I bought with the other yellow one that was down there, but he's eating really well, that guy is not. So definitely think something's wrong, but we're working on that. Discus are definitely one of the most interesting fish I've kept, the moodiest and most temperamental fish I've kept as well. They just get really scared if there's too many, if there's too much light in the room, they'll often like hide behind the plants and just get all sad. But they also are pretty fun and engaging. They'll like chase each other. They love to eat. They'll like, they can eat so many times in a day because the water's so warm and their, and their metabolism's high. And they're just super active, more than you would think for discus. A lot of people don't like discus because sometimes they tend to sit still kind of like they were but they're really, really peaceful in comparison to tanks like this where the fish are always chasing each other, always nipping at each other and fighting, and then these guys are much more peaceful in that nature. We have some cardinal tetras that I will be getting more of because I got these guys to make sure that the discus weren't gonna eat them. I've lost like 15 to 20 cardinal tetras before to angelfish, so I was worried that these discus might eat them because this guy right here has definitely eaten some neon tetras in his time. And cardinal tetras are quite expensive. Also, they're really, really cool fish to keep. Right now, they're just like four of them hanging out and the discus don't seem to bother them too much. At first, they were chasing them, not a problem anymore. And maybe when they get bigger, but that's the goal is to also grow these cardinal tetras up so that they're too big as the discus grow to not even be looked at as food. In nature, cardinal tetras are discus food, you know, so not much you can do other than making sure that the discus are fed well and the cardinals are as big as you can get them. We also have some clown loaches and some quarries in here. Clown loaches have been struggling to do well. I've lost a few. I also, I also got the clown loaches at a really small size, which can be hard to get them to a bigger size. And most fish stores don't really sell really small clown loaches because, for that reason. And then in this tank, most of the plants are Amazon swords, some Ludwiga and Jungle Val all in the back. I like the scape of this tank. The only thing I'm gonna add is probably some plants on this side so the discus don't get too scared when the door opens, but honestly, they get more excited now. But just to put something in that corner and maybe tie these pieces together. All right, guys, that is the fish room tour. I have nine aquariums, hundreds of fish. I don't even know how many fish. I just never count at this point. And if you're enjoying, the videos and content here, make sure to like and subscribe. I have tons of content planned, a lot more fish to get, and a lot more things to do with this fish room. And it's super, super exciting. And I hope you'll join me for the ride. So make sure to subscribe down below. If you really enjoyed this video, make sure to watch this one now. 